Hey fellas, Meat Trapper here. Welcome to the first episode of From Beavers to Burgers. So we've put our traps in, we've caught our beaver, we've hauled him out of the swamp back to the truck. Now it's time for the real work to start. Let's get him skinned. So here's where I do a lot of my beaver skinning. Um, I've got a little area on the side of my property that's uh, nice and shady and secluded. Um, the shady is important because a lot of times when I'm skinning beavers, um, it's quite warm. So what I've got is uh, my beaver trough, and that's just a rough uh, 45 degree angle trough that holds the beaver. And um, as you'll see as we go uh, about the skinning process, that really simplifies things. And uh, if you're going to be doing a lot of beaver, I recommend a trough. I keep a couple of little uh, buckets here, and one is a, a clean meat bucket, one is a trash bucket. So anything like uh, feet or tails or anything that I'm not going to keep, uh, or that uh, is, it doesn't need to be kept clean goes in one bucket. Anything that's going into uh, my stomach goes into the other bucket. Um, I do keep some uh, Ziploc baggies uh, also for the uh, organ meat. Uh, let's see, as far as tools, in addition to skinning knives, I keep a pair of loppers. Uh, that's what I use to remove the uh, front and back feet. It makes it very quick and easy to do that. I keep a, an old towel. And, uh, oh, let's see, here I have a, a gambrel, just in case I need to hang anything or if I'm doing coon. And this is a, a very useful device. Um, all it is is a piece of uh, cord, has a loop in it, an adjustable loop, and I tie it off to the tree here. This allows me to put this loop around the tail or around the foot or around the head so that as I'm pulling on the animal, uh, I, can, I can exert pressure and um, so that's adjustable. That's just a, a nice to have little thing right there. It, it helps out. The other thing is, I don't know if you can tell, but this is on a slope. This is on a downhill slope. Um, I like everything on a downhill slope so that when I wash everything off, everything is gonna run downhill. It's not gonna puddle up and pool and make a big pool of, uh, of water. And then I also have a hose uh, right there. I need to go ahead and pull that over and get it set up. But um, that's pretty much it, so let's get started. The first step in skinning the beaver is I'm gonna take the front foot off, the other front foot off, I'm gonna take both of the rear feet off, and then I'm gonna make a cut all the way around the tail. I'm gonna leave the tail on as that makes a convenient handle uh, to handle the beaver with. So I'm gonna take all four feet off, and for that I'm gonna use my loppers. Now you don't have to use loppers, uh, you can use your knife, make an incision, and wring the feet off. Um, but to do that, you need to know exactly where the tendons are uh, on both the front and the back feet. And for me, it's just quicker and easier to use the loppers. The one thing that I didn't uh, mention on the uh, catch video was that uh, this fella has been caught before. You can see he's missing a toe. So uh, somebody's been after him. And uh, they weren't as uh, weren't as lucky as I was. Always, uh, always interesting to see that. Now you can see I've removed both hind legs. I've made my cut around the base of the tail, and I've removed both of the front feet. The next step is to wring the legs, and what I mean by that is to get the hide to come off. I'm going to insert my blade up under and go around the legs like that. I'm going to do that on both the front and the rear legs. That's going to make it easier to separate uh, the pelt when I get into it. You can see, especially up on the front here, uh, a fat blade would be very difficult on such a, to wring such a small leg off on the front, whereas the little cub bear is going to work a lot better. And then I'm going to make my opening cut which will go from the vent all the way to the chin and that's one thing you can do is use the back of the blade to make a line like that and you can see how that left a little line in the fur and that'll give be your guideline to make your opening cut so let me wring the legs and make my opening cut
Now, at the base of the vent, I'm going to make a V cut from here and here. In other words, I'm going to cut around the vent area and then go straight up to the chin. Now, on a beaver, this is also where the oil sac glands and the castor glands are located. And they are right under the skin, so you have to be very careful in this area because if you pierce the castor glands and castor starts running everywhere, it really taints the meat. And once you get castor on meat, that's just the end of that. Now another trick that I use often is I take a razor blade knife with a hooked carpet blade and I'll get it under the lip and just run it straight down. Now at that point I've got the legs off, the legs are ringed, I've got my opening cut right up the middle. Now I'm simply going to use my skinning blade and I'm just going to start peeling the hide back. You can see I'll keep my finger up. The main thing is don't get in a hurry. Take your time. Be careful. Now, this is where a lot of people will cut holes in the hide. And a way to help do that is to get that hide and, and do it like that. Because your brain is, is going to make sure that you don't cut your fingers. See, I can feel, you can see my knuckles right through there. I'm not going to cut into my own knuckles. And so by doing that, that's going to help me avoid that. Once you get the pelt started, it gets easy. Another thing is don't hold the knife at an angle like this because you're going to cut through the pelt. Hold it perpendicular to the animal. Now I'm getting close to the leg hole and so you can see by inserting my finger up through that leg hole and that's the purpose of wringing that leg I can actually, there you go, see I just poked, poked my finger right through there so now I know exactly where that leg hole is located. There we go. And that's the rear leg. And for me personally, working with the base of the tail is the hardest place to work. You can see here's the oil sac glands right there. Everything is down in here. Uh, none of it is any good for your meat. Um, you just have to be careful in this area. Now at this point, I've skinned as far over as I can go. And this is where this trough will really come in handy because what I can do is I can turn that animal on its side and now the side is facing up and I can skin along that. See how I keep that pulled tight. I can feel my knuckles right through here so I know exactly where my hand is so I don't cut through the pelt. This area down here is extremely tough. One of the interesting things about a beaver is how at the hind legs the meat, the hind quarter meat, is attached directly to the pelt. So when you're skinning for meat, you want to make sure you save as much meat as possible and not do a hack job like a lot of uh, fur trappers do because they're just going to flush that off later. Now when I get up around the middle of the back or close to the middle of the back, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the animal. So I'm just going to throw the pelt back over and start on the other side. And what I like to do is get up here and work my way down now.
Now at this point, I've got the animal skinned out almost along the entirety of its back. What I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it around. I want the tail on the uphill side, I want the head on the downhill side, and that's going to allow the pelt to flop over, and the weight of the pelt will help me in the skinning process. There we go. That'll make more sense in just a minute. I'm going to start skinning forward. This pelt is fairly heavy, so it's really going to exert some force on the downhill side. You can see how easy that's coming off now. Almost home free. You can see that pelt is hanging over the end on the downhill slope and it's applying it's applying pressure of its own so that I really I can just sit here and do that and you can see the pelt will pull away now as I get up towards the head area I'm going to switch back to my rough knife because I'm going to start hitting bone and skull and uh, that saves my knife a little bit There's the eye right there. Make sure we get a good clean cut on that. I'll take the bottom lip off. And now we'll just skin down the nose. See, you're going to cut every inch of the way, that's for sure. So we're having that pelt hanging down really, really helps. It exerts a lot of force. That's it. You can see there's the nose, there's the ears, whiskers are still on it. Beautiful pelt. Well, fellas, I hope that was useful, so stay tuned, and next time we're going to bone out the beaver and take care of the meat.